Good afternoon. My name is Steve Harmon, and I'm at Oakland Cemetery at 1109 East Pembroke Avenue in Hampton, Virginia. And what I'm going to try to do is a small introduction to the cemetery, some of the issues that uh, that we have, and uh, some, maybe some of the problems that we have. But first, <clears throat> I would like to thank God uh, for His support. Okay, I know that what we're doing here, we could not have done this without His support. Okay and his intervention. So I'm very confident that he has been providing for us here and sending his angels out. So God bless and thank you for watching. Okay, first, <clears throat> well, I'd like to talk about our uh, uh, some of the issues that uh, people, people have. Some of them would like to know uh, what's the future of vision. Well, I did put out uh, to several people uh, if they'd like to write a vision statement. And it's something we could use historically. <clears throat> and uh, that gets us into, say, a nonprofit organization. Well, being abandoned by the owner, that, you know, it, we're kind of limited on what we can do. We don't go out and seek funds, we don't uh, hire out to cut different graves uh, we do all of them the same way right? there's about uh, 12 to 15 uh, plots out here that people take care of either they take care of them themselves or they hire out and they do a good job uh, most of the people that come out and take care of them themselves are in their 80s so these these people have been doing it for years okay and my hands out to them I'm just hoping maybe we can help out and give them a little relief okay and maybe they can uh, see that uh, their loved ones are being taken care of. And there's a lot of people out here that have nobody. There's nobody to take care of their plots. Uh, there's no funds coming in, so there can't be any funds going out, so insurance and taxes are gone. There, there is none, okay? Uh, thankfully, the, you know, the city has allowed me to uh, take this uh, uh, yard waste to the city landfill and I can dump it there and I take at least a load to two loads a month during the summertime and then several times a month during the winter trying to get rid of things but let's get back to the talking all right now the city has also put out a uh, some information on their website and uh, it's a list uh, as an action item list a list of best practices and uh, some information about uh, people's personal property. All right? This, these lots out here belong to somebody, okay? And you know, I could be liable, or you could be liable for damages, okay? And that's basically it. Now they do also have, like I say, a whole list of frequently asked questions, and then uh, the action item list. <clears throat> well, I, I, I use Microsoft Project to used that action item list and started working down. All right, number one was contact the owner. Well, I don't, you know, I kind of know the man's name. I don't know where he is. I don't know how to contact him. Uh, and uh, so I, I kind of, I went to the, the next steps. Uh, the other was the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, and I did contact, the, I think, the city inspection departments. And uh, I think there was one other, Chesapeake Bay Foundation. So I contacted all of them and I explained what we were doing here. And uh, uh, I understand the, the boundaries because uh, like you can see behind me, that's wetland protected. And there is drainage that comes in here. And uh, we basically just been trying to keep, you know, there's a lot of, that comes through the drain, a lot of Coke bottles and beer cans or cans different type of debris like that we'd like to try to keep them out I mean there's turtles down here there's lizards there's frogs possums some ducks come down here there's a whole slew and the robins love the birds love this place <laughs> they love this place all right so but and the other thing I'm sure you saw on the news see on the news and newspapers about uh, you know the grass being cut being maintained things like that 
And that, all those are understandable to me. They're all understandable. But <clears throat> here's some of the, uh, the concerns, all right, uh, that I just addressed. And I, tr I try to go through a couple of them. Um, if, if people are looking for the city or states to, to maintain these abandoned cemeteries, which you know, I can understand. I mean, there is no money coming in, right? But we all have legislators, okay? And, you know, it is the responsibility at all levels of government, both federal, state, and local government, to get the legislation that's correct, it's their responsibility, okay? It's to address these issues and to pass legislation that is reasonable legislation, say, for the cemetery. But we're not the only state. I think every state in the United States have cemetery issues. And we're one of the newest countries, and so, <clears throat> I don't, there wasn't any cemetery regulations, I think, back in the 17, 18, 1900s. <clears throat> but I know the uh, Virginia State has a good cemetery board. They, you know, they maintain it. They have a good website. They have good documents. Uh, a lot of it does not pertain to privately owned cemeteries that were abandoned like this. Uh, but people are still being interned here. As long as you have a deed, you're entitled to your plots. Some of the other issues that we have here are uh, that were addressed in the newspaper were uh, people being uh, buried in their walkways. Well, <clears throat> I can see that now uh, by trying to cut the grass, okay? <clears throat> there are stones in the middle of the walkway that you just can't get around, and it makes it really hard. It's already hard enough as it is going in between these stones here. Uh, there are some that are buried where you can't even get a lawnmower, can't even get a push mower in to cut. So they're, they're, I can see what the, the short term concern was, now I can see what the long terms are. And there are other issues that are similar to that. But uh, it takes about 24 hours to cut the grass here just with a riding lawnmower, okay? And that's just what can be cut with a riding lawnmower. That doesn't cover personal plots and stuff like that. So, or any weed eating, okay? So, and, uh, you know, a lot of the neighbors around here, they do come out. And, you know, the neighbors around, right around here, they do come out and they help. Uh, the Moose Lodge, right around the corner, you know, they normally have a big event during Memorial Day weekend, and they bring a whole slew of people out for that day. But they also have contributed for more than just that weekend. Uh, the, uh, the Sons of the Confederate, Enwell Camp, Magruder, Enwell Camp 99, they have contributed so much. They come out here every weekend to help us out. So, and bring equipment. If it wasn't for people like that, we would not have, I would not be able to do all this cutting. I can't afford to buy all this equipment and, uh, and, and try to maintain it too, <clears throat> okay? But these people have been bringing it out. Uh, Example out front, it was taking me about four hours to cut the front along the street up there, cemetery. <clears throat> With the equipment that they brought out, and uh, look, it cut down to two hours. So that's a pretty good example. That's a lot of savings there, especially when it's hot outside. But, <clears throat> and uh, we've had fire women, men, police women, and men contribute to, to what we're doing here. People all over the United States. Uh, I was surprised just how many people do come out here. There's a lot of people that do come out here. Uh, I, I didn't expect it at first. Uh, this is my fourth year of doing this, and uh, I hope I can continue on as long as I'm able. I'm going to try to. Uh, and then I'll try to go through this book here, like I said, the city had, and uh, well, I already did, and the map. And then I got a few of these local history books. We got the history of Hampton, uh, some cemetery symbols, the Hampton Owith, Hampton bygone days, and old soldier saloons and community. Well, 
We have uh, the VA hospital is about two miles away, and the veterans cemetery. There's uh, three veterans cemeteries that are within a couple miles from here, and uh, I'd go down there occasionally and try to get some training uh, uh, from the uh, men uh, resetting the veteran stones in the cemetery. Really good because there's over 300 veterans in here. And uh, there's one with, uh, that may be a Revolutionary War uh, soldier. So we, we got a lot. We got the uh, Civil War, Spanish-American War, World War I, World War II, Vietnam. Right now, that's the only ones I see on the stones. Uh, but I tried, I, I, I did a lot of them. Uh, and going to continue to do them. Uh, we don't, we don't hire out. Like if you want hire to do, the, we we don't hire to do that. We try to cut everything the same way. If we were to hire out, we would never get it. it just just wouldn't work out for us. But there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of uh, companies that uh, can come out here, and uh, I know Well Kept Lawn Service comes out here, and they do an excellent job. Uh, when they do come out here. Actually, uh, the plot over here, they, they take care of that. I mean, this right behind me, uh, Fuller, Philip Fuller, he was uh, very instrumental in uh, getting the first Phoebus Fire Department built. So you can imagine what that's like. I mean, he died in 1916. So you can imagine how old that is. And I say, this cemetery is full of old, old graves. And a lot of them have sunk. Uh, a lot of them are broke. And I'm finding a lot, and I plan to try to do a video on some of them, because there's a lot on YouTube that cover a lot. Uh, there are some that you know, I'm gonna uh, show uh, how I do it, maybe a little different than somebody else. But uh, hopefully I covered what I wanted. Um, uh, let me think here if there's anything else. I know I'm always going to forget it because this is my fourth video and so of trying to do this. So you have a good day. Thank you for tuning in and I hope you come back sometime. <laughs>